Aphelios, the weapon of the faithful. Do you know of the Targonian Lunari? They're a duper super obscure religion, from the land of Targon, of course, where the mountain of the same name stretches so far into the sky it looks like it could tickle the moon, which couldn't really happen, could it? Aphelios and his twin sister Alun were born into the Lunari during a rare celestial event, when the spirit and physical realms were reflecting off one another, an eclipse-type scenario that doesn't happen all too ever. Anyways, these kids, they knew they were special, what with being born in such a uniquely special timing window, and doubly so since their cult, uh, or I mean, uh, their faith is based on the moon. Aphelios was skilled at the physical stuff, and Alun was good at matters of the magic-y spirit. You and I'd call their upbringing a tad religiously fanatical, but that was their normal. There's a lot to their belief system, but it's mostly about how they consider the night's darkness to be a really, really, really big deal. And where you have people that worship the moon, you got people that worship the sun, the Solari. They rule over Targon and, coincidentally, also a zealous people. And, oh boy, the Solari do not like the Lunari. To them, the Lunari were heretics they drove out. Hell, the Solari forgot the Lunari even existed in the first place. But, no, the Lunari went into hiding, something they were good at because of all that darkness and shadowy stuff they believe in. Aphelios felt like he had to be the Wunderkind, Something of a chosen one. He would always be waving his extra special moonstone blades around, doing some casual ritualistic bloodletting so he'd be better at killing others or some mumbo like that. He didn't really have friends growing up. Uh, all he had in terms of people was his sister. And the two bonded real close. While the Lunari'd send Aphelios on extra secret missions, each more risky than the last... Alun was trained as a seer. She'd hone her magic abilities to have the moonlight show her special things and secrets that weren't supposed to be known. And as she got better at these magic-y things, she had to leave the temple for a different training regimen. And without his beloved sister being around, Aphelios's doubt about the Lunari started piling on. Being a bit aimless, Aphelios went on a pilgrimage into the darkness, a spiritual journey that the Lunari go on to find their true paths, their true orbits. Eh, I guess they call them that because they, they like the moon. Anyway, but uh, he, so he followed some moonbeams to a pool where he found flowers, and not some pathetic commoner's flowers. These were the ever-scarce noctum flowers. He could squeeze them into a juice to be better at being more stronger in the night, albeit they were just the tiniest bit super toxic. And after he downed a juice box full of noctum essence, it hurt so bad that he couldn't really feel anything. After that, for the first time in a decent amount of hundreds of years, an old temple, the Maris Omegnum, phased in the physical world from the spiritual this attracted the Lunari-like flies poking their heads out of the woodworks to observe the perpetual cycle of the heavens turn round. Every time that temple faded into our plane, it ushered someone good at magic into its gates. Alun was pretty good at magic, so it decided that she'd do the trick. And as the temple phased into our world, it lit the sky up like a firecracker. And with that, the Solari found out that the Lunari weren't actually all dead. So, the Solari did the only reasonable thing in that situation. Send out a giant army to kill off the rest of the Lunari. It was looking pretty grim there. Solari were a-cutting and a-stabbing and a-slashing every Lunari they could find. Aphelios wasn't looking too hot. They'd gone and smashed up his moonstone blades, so he decided to take a sip of that noctum juice. While the Lunari were getting slaughtered and the like in the fervor of battle, Alun scurried far into the magic temple. 
For some reason, Aphelios's flower juice let them share some sort of telepathy or something. And also, then she was able to give him a magic weapon, because his original weapon got smashed by those meanie Solari. So, the two siblings used their powers of love and the moon to turn the tide of battle, killing off the rest of the Solari. Because they believed in one another, and Aphelios was good at punching, and Alun was good at being magic. Uh -huh. And then, because she didn't want the Solari to get her, Alun made the temple and herself go back to the spirit world. Aphelios was sad, but it's okay because they were together, because she could use the flower juice to be connected to him, and she could use the magic from in the temple because it was a magic temple, and Alun was magic too. So, with that... They had both found their true paths. They'd be a tool, a very useful tool, well, more of a weapon, really, for the Lunari to utilize. A loon would be the brains of the outfit, and Aphelios would be the brawn. And as the two got better at working together, a loon crafted a fair few different weapons for Aphelios to use, each more magical than the other. Now that the Solari know that the Lunari are still hanging around, skulking in the shadows, Aphelios and Alun are most definitely going to be going on a lot of super-secret, top-secret missions in Targon.